Hey everyone, how's it going? So in this video, we are checking out the R1S. If you're not familiar with R1S, it's a model vehicle from Rivian. Rivian is a startup company here in the southwest of the US. We are at their satellite facility in Venice Beach. Very nice facility. So they have their own library for you to relax. Great for family, lots of stuff for kids to enjoy and be creative. So check them out if you happen to be in the area. I believe you do need some reservation at the moment to be able to access the R1S. So check out their website. So this is really just a library and there's history behind the Rivian company as well as the R1T and R1S. So let's get right into it. So this is the R1S, their first full size. Well, I'm not sure if this is full size, but this is a seven seater SUV is definitely a huge SUV when you compare the cargo space and the passenger capacity. And you have four adjustable cargo hooks. You have two electric buttons to fold down the third row seat electronically. You have your 110 and 12 volt outlet that you can cover or open up. And you have your own tire pressure pump. So not many vehicles have this, if any at all today. So you can pump your own vehicle tires or others. You have your subwoofer on the rear right. We'll go into the detail of the exterior in the later part of this video, but just taking a look at these beefy wheels. These are 20 inch gloss black all-terrain tires, I believe. So that's an extra 3,500. With the interior, so this is the black interior. I don't know the exact name, but this is the Venture version. So you do have ventilated seats. All the materials feels very premium, whether it's the Explorer or the Venture package. And even these lever feels very nice, easy to pull. It's not difficult. The seats are, I would say, on the lighter side of moving it back and forth to get passenger in the third row. So that's not going to be an issue. It's not electronic at all. And the switches feels nice. The rear door window looks to be single panel. So it is single panel. And we'll take a look at the front door later and see if it's door panel. Going around to the passenger side, front passenger seat, you do have full lumber support with the Venture package. If you get the Explore package, it's only the driver. Lots of storage space. Door handle is made of, of some sort of aluminum or metal. So the front door window is door panel. So that's great. It will reduce noise significantly. You have your wood trim finish on the door as well as on the dash. Lots of storage again. At the center console part, you have two cup holders. Looks like you can put a large in there, maybe not a super large tumbler, but a decent sized one will fit. All the materials, again, feel very soft to the touch. You have a hidden Bluetooth speaker. You can use this for tailgating, camping, or other purpose while you're out playing a sport, etc., working out. As for the display, very snappy. I didn't feel any lag. Maybe certain menu. It took about half a second before it responded, but it could be that this is the early software. So they will continue to improve that. Deep pockets and two USB-C there that you see underneath the armrest. Going back to the rear with the second row seats folded, you can see it sits flush. Huge space for hauling object, materials. You have your controls for your vents in the back. It's not the auto vents that you have in the front. So those are manual vents and control to your heated seats. You do have huge panoramic roof glass as well. From the front profile of this vehicle, it looks exactly like the R1T. Perhaps there's a slight difference in, in the height. Otherwise, it's almost identical. 
there might be slight difference with the length of this vehicle. I believe it's about, about 16 to 18 inch shorter than the actual R1T. So it's shorter than the truck, but the width is exactly identical. Lights are identical. The bar lights are identical. How you open up this frunk or hood is identical is on the towards the right side. You do have these magnets now. I didn't see this in the R1T at the time, but you do have magnets tray that you can either use or open up and store deeper items. You do have a spot where you can put your charge wires and you can switch that out and put ice and drinks in here because it does have a plug that you can empty out the water if it happens to be that you're front gating or tailgating. Back to the trunk or the cargo area, you do have storage space here for first aid kit as well as your tire pressure, uh, tire pressure wire, or not wire, but hose. And the top tailgate is electronic. I wasn't able to get it to work here, not sure why, but it did work later, but you can manually close it and you manually open it as well. This is the rear profile. Looks just like any other SUV, but very modernized and very distinct that this is not your ordinary SUV. I do like the rear look of the R1T more, but the R1S is definitely more practical due to the cargo space and also the passenger capacity. Back to the third row seat. So now we're gonna test out the space for the third row. You can see there with the second row seats all the way back, you're still able to put a average height person, about 5'10", 180 pounds, no issue. So a full-size adult can fit in the third row comfortably on a long road trip. And again, to fold it back and forth, you get used to it after a few tries. It's actually not that heavy. At first it felt heavy. You just have to understand how the lever works. Here's the interior from the rear seat. You have this nice panoramic roof. This is full glass, one piece. You also have a third row full glass as well. So there's actually two piece of glass for the top, a large one and a small one. You also can purchase this roof rack, roof crossbar for $500 from Rivian. I believe they partnered with Yakima. It can adapt to bicycle rack, uh, surfboard, kayak, and so forth. And to open up the charge port is on the left-hand side of the front bumper. You can see there just a touch of a button. It will open up and here's your J1772 with fast charging. So you can charge this up from 20 to 80%. I believe with the 250, 300 plus watts, you can get, uh, you can get that within 15, 20 minutes or so. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I've been informed. The front is automated, so you open and close with a switch underneath the front bumper. It opens very smoothly. Here's the headlights with the high beam LED. This is also your signal hazard light. So your daytime running light works during the day. And if you turn on your signal, your daytime running lights will turn off and your signal will turn on and supersede your daytime running lights. As for, again, the wheels, these are the dark 20 inch all-terrain wheels. That's a $2,500 or $3,500 upgrade. The front also have a place where you put your windshield fluid. The front is very deep, pretty large compared to the Model X. You have your 12 volt access in the front as well. And with this front, you can either store items underneath this tray and then store additional items on top of the tray, or you can use the bottom as a cooler. 
So you can throw ice in there, drinks in there. It does have a plug that you can drain out the water. These are magnets, so you don't have to hook or worry about it flapping down. From the rear, you can see the under cargo it looks to be a flat battery like a skateboard, just like Tesla. And then you have your four motors. You have multi-link suspension there. There's, there's the motor. You can see it slightly there, but it looks to be clean underneath with reinforcement. From the rear, you do have extra storage underneath this tray. So this is where you can get a spare tire or you can use this at extra storage. And the spare tire is $500. It's a full spare that deflates when stored away. Here's your valve for your tire pressure pump and it will reach all four tires. You can also get the first aid kit from Rivian. I, would, I wouldn't recommend this because they're charging, I believe close to 200 or so for this kit. You can build this kit yourself for less than $20. So something to think about when you're purchasing the R1S. Here's your tow hook with access to power. And you can tow up to 70, 7,100 pounds with this vehicle. 71 or 7,700. Uh, but it's a lot less than that of the R1T. I'm not sure why that is, but it is a lot less. So the R1T um, could tow up to, I think, 12, 1,200 or so pounds. And the tailgate here can hold up to 500 pounds. So three people, four people can sit on there with no issue. As for the rear cargo, you do have adjustable cover that you can make the rear seats flush with whatever you're storing. Again, here's the storage with the tray and there's additional storage underneath that tray. So remember that. As for the sliding cargo hooks, you can purchase more and have more hooks. So something you can also add on. The rear tailgate is automatic. The rear tailgate on the bottom end is not. So we'll go through another R1S. This is the Ocean Blue. And again, this is the Explorer. Actually, no, this is the Adventure package version. So they're both Adventure, so they have all the high ends are the upgraded. They have all motors, uh, four motors, not all motors, all wheel drive uh, with either standard or extended battery pack. So standard gets you 260 miles of range and the uh, extended battery pack get you close to 320. 316 is what they currently rated. They all come with seven seats interior, built in air compressor and accessory yes. kit. Um, door front bumper tow hooks is the Venture package. That's the difference between the Explorer and the Venture. The other difference is that you have ventilated seats and you have lumbar support in the passenger side, as well as compass yellow interior accent. You also have 100% recycled microfiber headliner. So in the likes of, of Alcantara, that's what you have. If not, you will just have a texture, textile headliner. You do have wood finish and a chili witch floor mat with the adventure package. So those are the difference between the adventure and the explore. If you're not into wood, I would say um, just go ahead and get the explore because the wood is the biggest difference. And also the sound system would be the two items I would be borderline between the adventure and the explore. I don't really care so much about the compass yellow interior accent or the recycled microfiber headliner. I'm okay with the textile headliner. Hardly anyone ever look or touch up in your headliner unless you're doing a review anyways. Um, as for ventilated seats, um, I probably won't use that often, even if in a hot climate, because I just wanna reduce, reduce the, the usage of battery, especially EV. You wanna minimize any usage in the vehicle other than just driving. As for the color, you know, it comes in white, black. This come in this nice blue, this ocean blue that you can get. Um, one interesting fact that you can adjust the front vent automatically through the display, just like in a Tesla vehicle, but you can actually see the vent move. 
So this is something I didn't notice when I was reviewing the R1T but with this R1S, something that um, isn't noticeable because it's black on black. If you look closely, you can see the vent adjust. Um, I'm sure the Tesla version does the same thing. It's just hidden. You just can't see it. So something, something neat to start a conversation with your, your passenger or whoever's interested. You can actually see these vents. And you can also clean it because you physically, you can touch it. So that's really it. Uh, there's nothing else to really talk about this vehicle. The display function works very similar to that of the Tesla. Very snappy. You have all your functions, your height adjustment. You can raise the car up to the highest. I believe it goes up to close to 16, 15, 16 inches of ground clearance. All the functions, controls are being done on this one display. And you have your apps. I believe you can add additional application in the future. Hopefully they'll allow Apple CarPlay and um, maybe even uh, Android Auto. So that's a neat feature. As for other uh, neat feature, you have a flashlight built into the door, your driver's door, and you can just plug this back in and it automatically turns off. So in case you need a flashlight, you don't have to fit around your glove box or your armrest to find it. As for the rear cargo, um, you do have a lot of space in the rear cargo. And if you happen to sleep in here, and I did try laying down here, I had about maybe seven feet of length or so. And you do have 104 cubic feet of secure storage. So 104 cubic feet, that's huge. You have your 40, 20, 40 split and 50, 50 split. So before we end the video, just wanna give you a quick glance of the R1T. This is their truck version. You've probably seen this on the road already. The interior, exterior, very similar to the R1S, especially the interior. The exterior does look slightly different with the length being shortened on the R1S compared to the R1T, as well as you have this kitchen. So on the R1T, you can option for this kitchen, which comes with a stove, a couple stove. You have storage for making soup or cooking, Tupperware and dishes or metal dishes, whatever you want to call it. You also have a sink you can wash your dishes with. So nice options that you can actually purchase from Vivian and it's built for Rivian R1T. You also have your deck tent there. Otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully you find this video helpful and informative in your next EV purchase. So these are just the interior options that you can get. You have your black mountain. So everything is really dark, black leather texture or dark. You still have that yellow ambient accent finish in the forest edge. And then the wood is a dark oak, but everything other than that forest edge is the same, just a lighter color. And then you have your ocean. This is the ocean interior option. And this ocean coast has this gray material. I don't see the white. I thought they had like a white finish, but maybe that's just because the pictures look white. That is a gray finish. So anyways, catch you all next time. Remember to subscribe. Take care.